I'm Matt Martinez. I'm the chair of Root HCM Accelerating Guideline Driven Care. This is your quick tip for echocardiography. Echocardiograms remain the mainstay for the initial assessment of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and requires 15 millimeters or thicker left ventricular hypertrophy. You don't need symptoms or a heart murmur, and you don't require obstruction to make the diagnosis, but you do have to exclude other causes of hypertrophy, including hypertension, amyloid, renal failure, and Fabry cardiomyopathy, and even some more rare conditions like Dannon disease. Any pattern of hypertrophy beyond 15 millimeters could be considered hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and that asymmetry is not required. When you're using echo, make sure it's a comprehensive echo. 2D, Doppler, and strain all play a role when investigating for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Two-dimensional echo looking at morphology and of course the 15 millimeter diagnosis of hypertrophy can be done easily either with M mode or 2D imaging. Look specifically at patterns, looking to identify apical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, basal septal hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or that classic reverse curve septal hypertrophy, which is more likely to be gene positive. A quick tip is to use the long axis to make the diagnosis of, of the morphologic pattern, and then use all of your views to look for additional features. Don't just use the classic septal measurement given to you by most sonographers. Look outside at the apex, the anterior, and the infraseptal walls, making sure that your measurements are accurate. Make sure you avoid over-measurement of hypertrophy, excluding abnormal septal papillary muscle insertions or that RV portion that is right next to the left ventricle, which can lead to overestimation of left ventricular hypertrophy. Look for supporting features, multiple papillary muscles or thickened papillary muscles that are apically displaced. Look for the, uh, uh, an anterior leaflet of the mitral valve that's elongated or perhaps a papillary muscle that's insert, inserted into the anterior leaflet and look for myocardial crypts and of course, interrogate the apex for the apical aneurysm, which will be important later on along the route, of, along route HCM for decisions about sudden cardiac death risk. Make sure you look at the mitral valve to look for systolic anterior motion, and it may require provocation to determine if somebody is obstructed or non-obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, bedside provocative measures, or even a stress echocardiogram is really necessary to make sure that you don't have obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Later on on the route, we'll talk about how this can play into a role for how we're gonna intervene in those with obstructive or non-obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Doppler interrogation is important, of course, to look for diastolic dysfunction and color Doppler can help look for the mitral valve uh, regurgitation signal, looking for the classic posteriorly directed mitral regurgitation jet associated with turbulence and SAM septal contact hallmarks of obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And then of course, look for intrinsic mitral valve disease because if there's existing intrinsic mitral valve disease, therapeutic interventions may change when in the presence of LVOT obstruction plus significant mitral valve disease. Make sure you use the, post, the pulse wave Doppler to look for uh, the location of obstruction and continuous wave Doppler to identify peak gradients. That classic late peaking dagger shaped signal is important and often a misstep when identifying obstructive versus non-obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Look to be able to identify the difference between mitral valve regurgitation signal, a mid-cavitary obstruction, and again, that late peaking LVOT obstruction, classic for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And then finally, strain. Strain imaging continues to be important if it's 
it, this will help you in the setting of an abnormal ECG. It can also help you for the specific pattern where there may be septal sparing like those in amyloid hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So when you're looking at echo, it should be comprehensive with 2D, color Doppler, pulse wave and continuous wave Doppler to identify patterns and severity of, hyper, of hypertrophy, look for diastolic function and visualize all of the features of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy that can be supportive. And of course, look for obstruction, quantitate the severity of hypertrophy and the severity of, of, of the obstruction itself. Thank you for joining us. This is your quick tip for echocardiography.